Hey, what is going on guys? RVZ Stealth here, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my opinion on the best top laners for 5.16. So, there haven't been too many changes to top lane recently, and therefore my list is fairly similar since the last time I did one, but without further ado, let's get into the video. So first up, for top lane I have Hecarim. Hecarim is a great pick as long as you can survive the early game and you can get a good teleport home guard off down bot lane. Once you do hit level 6 as Hecarim, I would like, or I would recommend rushing home guards on Hecarim because once you do get the home guards on him, you can ask your bot lane to put a ward in the far bush and then you can just look for a teleport home guard down bot lane and as long as your bottom lane does follow up, you're pretty much guaranteed a kill because you'll have your ultimate which will fear them and then you can knock them back with your uh, E so his uh, ganks are just really good once you do hit level 6 as him. He's also a very strong roamer due to his ultimate and his E and he's got pretty good mobility as well with those two or with those two abilities. He's also a great team fighter due to his fear and due to his pretty strong burst damage if he does have his home guards charged up. He's also got a very good mid game power spike once he does finish off the Trinity Force and he's also a bruiser so you really only need to build Trinity Force on Hecarim and then you can go full tank after that and still do a load of damage. He does have sustain in lane 2 so it makes him a pretty solid laner and he can also take ignite in the laning phase which makes him or which gives him pretty good kill pressure. One con to Hecarim is that he is pretty weak if he does fall behind. Hecarim is an all in champion so if you do fall behind as him then you won't be able to look for those um, hard engages with his ultimate. Next up I have Nar, so Nar is my personal favorite top laner because he's just got so much teamfight potential in mega form. If you can get a good Nar off in a teamfight, which is his ultimate, then it could single handedly win you the game and I just really like that about Nar. He's also one of the strongest laners in the game because he is a ranged champion and he's also like ranged and melee so it just allows him to be very versatile and in both forms he's really good. He can like kite in his normal form with his Q because it gives him a pretty good slow and then in mega form he's got like 3 CC abilities which just makes him a beast. He's also got pretty good kill pressure in the laning phase because he is ranged and he does have the slow on his Q as well as the percentage health damage he gets from his W. And he does have that gap closer on his E which makes him a very safe pick and it allows him to engage really nicely as well. One con to Nar is that he is, or it's hard to manage his rage at times and you do have to get used to playing Nar to be able to manage his rage correctly because you always want to stay around like 75% rage before a team fight starts and if you are looking to take Baron or Dragon then make sure you don't use your Mega Nar before the team fight starts because if you do that then you will be at a little bit of a disadvantage. Next up on my list I have Rumble, so Rumble, the thing I like about him the most is that you don't even need to have a strong laning phase as him to be effective because his ultimate is so strong and if you can just land it a good Rumble ultimate in a team fight, it could change the game even if you're like, if you're losing and you just hit one good Rumble ultimate then it could bring the game into your favor. He's an amazing team fighter due to his ultimate and due to his strong AoE damage from his Q. He's also got a great mid game power spike. Once he does pick up the Leandris and the Sork Boots, he starts to do an insane amount of damage. He's also got pretty good crowd control with his E as well as his ultimate, and his lane matchups are pretty good as well against the melee or melee top laners. And like I said, he's strong even if you do fall behind as him because of the threat of his ultimate. And he's great at fighting in the jungle. You always want to be looking for fights in the jungle when you're playing as Rumble because it just allows you to line up a nice equalizer and it's really hard for the enemies to escape out of your ultimate if you do use it in the jungle. And his shield is also really nice for trading in the laning phase. It also does give him a, uh, it doesn't give him a great speed boost, but it does give him a speed boost which is nice for just getting around the map. And one con to Rumble is that he is harder to play. In my opinion, his ultimate does take a little bit of time to get used to, so if you haven't played Rumble yet, then I'd recommend trying him in normal games, get used to using his ultimate, and then once you've got that down, head into ranked and start wrecking with him. Next up I have Riven. Riven is one of the most snowball-y top laners in the game. If you can just get one or two kills in the laning phase with Riven, then the game is pretty much won as long as you guys as long as your team groups up. 
and you know how to play Riven decently, then you can just take over team fights. And she's just a really good duelist as well because of her crazy strong CC coming out of her W as well as her Q. She's also got insane mobility with her Q and her E, which just allows her to escape out of certain situations and it allows her to get around the map really quickly and just chase enemies down. Her um, shield is also really nice for the laning phase to negate a lot of damage and it's also the dash as well so it's two great abilities in one and she also does have that insane burst damage. One counter Riven or two counter Riven actually is that if she does fall behind she is pretty weak because she is an all-in champion and she is a melee champion so if you do fall behind as her then you could just get or you can just get kited really easily in team fights and just get bursted down if you do not have the burst damage to um, kill one of the enemy squishies and she does have some harder lane matchups as well. So last but not least, on the top 5 I have Aurelia, and pretty much no surprise here, Aurelia is one of the strongest duelists in the game because of the stun from her E as well as her true damage, and the amount of sheen procs that she can get off with um, all of her abilities. She's also got one of the strongest mid game power spikes in the game, if not the strongest with her trinity force, and she's got true damage on her W which makes her a great duelist like I said. Her sustain is also really nice with her W and her level 6 all-in is so strong because once you do hit level 6 as a relay, you'll probably have your sheen by then and the damage that you have with the sheen and hitting your level 6 is just absolutely crazy and you can pretty much duel any other top laner in the game as long as you can land that stun. She's got the gap closer on her Q too so you can use that to like dash to low health minions and then stun your opponent and dash out and it, you can also just use it to dash to them directly so it's a really versatile ability. And she does also have pretty decent wave clear because her ultimate is on a pretty short cooldown. And one of the biggest pros to Aurelia is that she is a bruiser so all I like to pick up is the Trinity Force on Aurelia and then go full tank after that and you still do a load of damage. A few cons to her though is that she does have a weaker early game so I would recommend starting Flask on Aurelia unless you're really confident on her because her first few levels are a little bit troublesome. And she is also quite mana hungry in the early game so that's another reason that you should start the flask. So first up on the honor mentions I have Olaf. Olaf is actually a pretty solid top laner and I haven't seen enough of him to like say that he's a top 5 quality top laner. I definitely think that he is a very good pick though and he could have been in the number 5 spot. He doesn't really have like a load of counters in the top lane and he's actually a pretty solid pick against someone like Aurelia. Um, as long as you can land your Q on Olaf then you have a lot of damage and I just think he's a pretty solid pick especially if the enemies have a strong CC team because he can just run to the back line with his ultimate up so if you're looking for a pretty good bruiser then I would recommend picking up Olaf. Next on the honorable mentions I have Malphite, so Malphite's actually a pretty good pick right now in my opinion because we're still seeing a lot of the immobile AD carries being played like Sivir, Jinx, and Ash, and I've recently noticed that Twitch is having a bit of a comeback so Malphite is a great pick into them because he can just look for picks with his ultimate and just burst them down in team fights. so I think that Malphite's a great pick right now because of that. He's also a pretty good pick because the Sated Devour junglers, most of them benefit off of attack speed and Malphite's E gives an attack speed debuff, so I think he's just an overall pretty strong pick for those two reasons. Next up I have Wukong. Wukong is a very strong team fighting top laner as well. He's also got a very solid laning phase and once he does hit level 6 his all in is quite good as well, so if you're looking for a strong team fighter with actually quite a bit of damage then Wukong is a great pick. Next I have Ryze. Ryze is a great late game champion. If, if you're looking for a strong scaling top laner then I would definitely recommend trying out Ryze. His early game also isn't all that bad. As long as you don't get like camped in the early game and as long as you can stack your tier and get your Rod of Ages early then Ryze becomes like pretty much unkillable and he deals just a ton of damage in team fights. Next up I have Nasus, so even though Nasus does have like some counters in the laning phase, as long as he can like get his Q stacks and get to late game then he can like one shot or two shot AD carries in the late game and his wither if he can place that on the enemy AD carry in a team fight it basically makes them useless so I think that Nasus is a very good pick as long as he can get his stacks. 
Next I have Shen, so Shen is a great top laner as well because of his ultimate mainly. Once you do it level 6 as Shen, always look for opportunities to use your ultimate because it's a game changing ability and if you can use that to like counter gank down bot lane, then it could just change the game right there. So as long as you are good at paying attention and you have good map awareness and you can use your ultimate at the right situation, then Shen is a really good pick. So to round out the Arnold mentions, I have Fizz. Fizz is also like a pretty solid bruiser in the top lane. He's also like, he's also got quite a bit of damage because of the on hit with his W. You want to max out your W first on top lane Fizz. If you are going like for the bruiser Fizz with the Trini Force and then like the frozen uh, heart and you could pick up the blade of the ruin king as well on fizz depending on how the game is going but he's also like really slippery in team fights if you do get that cooldown reduction and he's really hard to kill so i think that bruiser fizz is quite good he can also run the ignite in the top lane with the teleport so he's got good kill pressure in the laning phase and for th for those reasons i think he's a pretty good top laner so that is all for the video guys, if you enjoyed then be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. So thank you guys so much for watching, have an awesome day, and I will see you in my next video.